Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's Winterhelm Games. We're back with another reaction. This one is back with some twisted tales again. I'm helping them out, putting these up. I enjoy listening to these. Um, this one is three dark and creepy tree cemetery horror stories. Um, so we'll see how these ones go. And then we'll keep an eye over the next couple of weeks, even into the new year. See if there's any kind of winter, kind of Christmas or New Year horror stories in, in the mix somewhere. And uh, we'll try and get them done for you. So um, like and subscribe if you like this type of content. And if you do, head over to Twisted Tales and give them some love and let them know I sent you along. And uh, listen for yourself. Some of these are, all of these so far I've heard are actually really, really good. So let's get into it. A cemetery caretaker might not be everyone's dream job, but hey, no, it pays the bills. Exactly. The graveyard I tended to was ancient, <clears throat> tombstones older than your grandpa, each mm -hmm. with a history buried deep in the past. And let me tell you, sometimes the past has a nasty habit of resurfacing when you least expect it. Right. It all started on a chilly autumn night. The moon hung low in the sky, casting a silvery glow over the graveyard. I was going about my usual routine, raking fallen leaves and checking for any signs of mischief, kids trying to play ghost hunters or raccoons having a graveyard feast. As I strolled among the moss-covered tombstones, a strange chill settled in the air. I shrugged it off as the wind whispering through the ancient trees, but the unease lingered. That's when I noticed it, a figure standing among the graves, barely visible in the moonlight. I called out, thinking it might be a lost soul or just someone wandering in after hours. Mm. No response. The figure remained eerily still, like a statue in the dark. As I approached, my flashlight caught a glimpse of a face, pale and expressionless, like a ghost from a black and white film. Mm. Hey, you can't be here after hours, I said, trying to sound more authoritative than I felt. The figure turned towards me, and for a moment, I swear its eyes glowed with an otherworldly light. I blinked, and it was gone. Vanished into thin air. And the ghost went, I okay, I'll go. <laughs> thinking maybe it was just a trick of the light or lack of sleep playing tricks on me. Go out to be hell of a but trick, wasn't it? wasn't the end of it. The next night, the atmosphere in the graveyard was different. The air felt heavy, and a thick fog clung to the ground, swallowing the tombstones in an eerie embrace. I pushed my cart loaded with gardening tools, the wheels squeaking in the silence of the night as I passed a particularly old section of the graveyard. The fog thickened, obscuring my vision. I felt a cold hand brush against my shoulder, and I spun around expecting to see a fellow caretaker playing a prank. No one was there. I shook off the uneasy feeling, telling myself it was just the fog playing tricks on my mind. But as I continued my rounds, the fog seemed to follow me swirling and dancing in unnatural patterns. The air became charged, like the graveyard itself was holding its breath. Mm. That's when I heard it, a distant mournful wail, like the cry of a lost soul. The sound echoed through the graveyard, instantly sending shivers down my spine. I strained my ears, trying to locate the source, but the fog obscured everything. The wail intensified, rising and falling in a haunting cadence that seemed to reverberate through the tombstones. I stumbled upon an old mausoleum. One of its doors was slightly open. The wailing seemed to emanate from within, as if the very walls were mourning. Against my better judgment, I slowly went inside. Inside, it was cold, and the air was stagnant. The wailing grew louder, now filling the mausoleum with an oppressive sorrow. I mm. spotted a flickering candle at the far end, casting long shadows on the crumbling walls. As I approached, the wailing grew even louder and reached a crescendo, a uh -huh. symphony of anguish that clawed at my sanity. In the dim light I saw <coughs> figures, transparent and ethereal, their forms shifting like smoke, faces contorted in pain, yeah, eyes I think, hollow I think and most filled people with would an run at that point. Torment. They reached out to me, their ghostly hands trembling in an eternal plea for release. I stumbled backward, my heart racing. The mausoleum seemed to pulse with a dark energy, a vortex of despair that threatened to swallow me whole. The figures spoke, their voices a chorus of whispers that echoed through the hollow chambers. Set us free. The plea hung in the air. Set us free? A desperate free? cry that reverberated through my very soul. Call a priest. I didn't know how to help them, but one thing was clear. Something was terribly wrong in that graveyard. Something that transcended the realm of the living. 
The next day, I couldn't shake the memory of the haunted mausoleum. The fog lingered, a constant reminder of the spectral wailing that had haunted me. I decided to do some digging, not literally, but in the <laughs> records of the graveyard. Maybe there was a forgotten tale buried in the archives. As I searched online, I stumbled upon a name, Eleanor Hartfield. She was buried in that very mausoleum over 50 years ago. The records were sketchy, but they spoke of tragedy. A young woman who had died under mysterious circumstances, mm. her death shrouded in whispers of betrayal and heartbreak. I couldn't ignore the connection. Eleanor's restless spirit seemed to be reaching out, a spectral cry for justice or peace. The graveyard, once a place she of solace, murdered them? had become a stage for a tragedy that refused to fade away. That night, I returned to the mausoleum. The air inside was thick with an oppressive energy, mm. and the wailing began anew. I addressed Eleanor, speaking words of solace and understanding. It felt absurd, talking to a ghost, but desperate times call for desperate measures. As I spoke, this wailing softened, the figures becoming less agitated. I felt a strange warmth, as if the air itself was embracing me. The fog outside lifted, and a gentle breeze carried away the heavy sorrow that had plagued the graveyard. The mausoleum became still, the ghosts fading into the shadows. Really? The wailing ceased, replaced by an eerie silence. I left the mausoleum, feeling a mixture of relief and lingering unease. The graveyard, once haunted by a restless spirit, seemed at peace, but the memory of that night lingered. I continued my duties, tending to the tombstones and maintaining the serenity of the graveyard. The fog no longer clung to the ground, and the air felt lighter as if the weight of the past had finally lifted. I never spoke of the haunting to anyone who would believe a graveyard caretaker's ghost story, right? Mm -hmm. But sometimes, when the wind rustles through the trees and the moon hangs low in the sky, I can't help but wonder if Eleanor's spirit still lingers, watching over the graveyard that is now her eternal home. It was awesome. one of those nights, that you was know, really good, that one, actually. the kind where the darkness seems thicker and the silence is so heavy it could smother you. I was walking home after a late shift, my footsteps echoing on the empty streets. The glow of the streetlights played tag with the shadows, and the distant hum of traffic had long faded into the background. My apartment was just a couple of blocks away, and I figured I'd take a shortcut through the old graveyard. It wasn't the brightest idea, but my tired brain was convinced it would shave a good ten minutes off my journey. Besides, I'd done it a dozen times before, without anything remotely creepy happening. The graveyard itself was one of those forgotten places, the kind that belonged to a time when people used words like mausoleum and dressed in suits for Sunday picnics. Mm. The entrance gate creaked as I pushed it open and I stepped onto the gravel path, trying to ignore the chill that crawled up my spine. Under the faint glow of a flickering lamppost, I could see the silhouettes of tombstones standing like silent sentinels in the moonlit night. The air was still, and the only sound was the crunch of gravel beneath my sneakers. The tombstones cast long, eerie shadows that seemed to sway with the rhythm of my steps. As I strolled deeper into the graveyard, I couldn't shake the feeling that something was off. The night had a strange energy, like mm. a subtle shift in the air that the you can't quite put wrong. your finger on. I told myself it was just fatigue playing tricks on me. The shortcut took me through a narrow path flanked by rows of weathered tombstones. I could barely make out the names and dates etched into the stone, but there was a somber beauty to it all. That's when I heard it. A soft, distant whisper that slithered through the air. I stopped dead in my tracks, straining to catch the words. At first I dismissed it as the wind playing tricks, but then the whispers grew louder, more distinct. It was like a low murmur, a conversation carried by unseen voices. I scanned the graveyard, half expecting to see a group of shadowy figures huddled around a hidden campfire. My eyes locked onto a particularly imposing mausoleum, its stone facade cloaked in shadows. The whispers seemed to emanate from there, as if the ancient walls were sharing secrets long buried. Against my better judgment, I found myself drawn towards it. The air around the mausoleum felt charged, and the whispers became clearer. It was as if the very walls were speaking to me, revealing stories of lives lived and lost. The rational part of my brain screamed at me to turn around. But curiosity, that cursed human trait, propelled me forward. 
The door of the mausoleum stood slightly ajar, a darkness lurking within that seemed to defy the pale moonlight. I hesitated for a moment, a chill running down my spine, but then I pushed the door open with a creak that sounded like a scream in the silent night. The interior was a symphony of shadows, dancing across the stone walls as if choreographed by unseen spirits. The whispers grew louder, now forming words that sent shivers down my spine. Names, dates, and fragments of conversations echoed through the cold, musty air. I took a cautious step inside and turned on the flashlight on my cell phone. The light casted long beams of light that sliced through the darkness. And then I saw them. Figures, ethereal and indistinct, standing in the corners of the room. Their eyes, hollow and haunted, locked onto mine. Hmm. Okay. A cold sweat broke out across my forehead as I stumbled backward. Yeah. The it whispers crescendoed out. into a cacophony, a chorus of voices that seemed to tell a tale of sorrow and unrest. The figures in the shadows began to move, their ghostly forms converging towards me. Hmm. I bolted out of the mausoleum, the door slamming shut behind me. The graveyard was no longer silent. It echoed with the anguished wails of the unseen voices. I ran faster than I knew I could, my heart pounding in my ears as I emerged from the graveyard into the cool <laughs> night air. I didn't stop until I reached the safety of my apartment, the door slamming shut behind me. As I caught my breath, I couldn't shake the feeling that the echoes of the graveyard lingered in the air around me. It's hard to hope from the day didn't follow on, you. I avoided that shortcut like the plague. The whispers haunted my dreams and the faces of those ghostly figures lingered in the recesses of my mind. Whether it was a trick of the tired brain or something more sinister, I couldn't say for sure. But one thing was certain. I would never look at a graveyard the same way again. It all Yeah. That was a very good one to be fair. Um it was very, very well done, I think. That was it's interesting. I mean, I know there are places near here, near where I live, that people would just take a shortcut through to get from one street to another or cut off a corner, go through a graveyard, but would you be willing to go through at certain times of night, you know? Look at a graveyard the same way again. It all started with one of those dares that no one in their right mind would accept. The sort that's of nice. challenge that's concocted on a lazy summer afternoon when the sun's too hot and boredom's too real. So there we were, a group of five teenagers with more guts than brains, staring at the old graveyard at the edge of town. Kyle, the instigator, grinned like a Cheshire cat as he laid out the dare. We spend the night in the graveyard, he said, his eyes sparkling with mischief. No running off, no chickening out, the whole night until the sun comes up. The graveyard had a reputation, and not the good kind. Locals claimed they'd heard strange noises, seen flickering lights, and felt the cold touch of unseen hands. Still, we were teenagers, invincible in our minds, fueled by a potent mix of curiosity and a dash of stupidity. As night fell, we gathered at the entrance of the graveyard. The air was thick with tension, and a gust of wind sent a shiver down my spine. Taylor, the skeptic of the group, rolled her eyes. Mm. This is stupid, guys. Nothing's gonna happen. It's just a bunch of old stones and dead people. <laughs> well, technically we that's true. deeper into the graveyard, the moon emitting an eerie glow over the tombstones. The shadows seemed to dance, playing tricks on our eyes. We set up camp near a gnarled oak tree, surrounded by the silent company of the departed. The first hour or so was surprisingly uneventful. We laughed, told ghost stories, and snacked on whatever junk food we had scavenged from home. The graveyard, bathed in the soft moonlight, took on an otherworldly beauty. Maybe Sarah was right, and this was all just a bunch of hocus pocus. But uh -huh. as the night wore Very on, good. things got weird. A distant howl echoed through the graveyard, causing us all to freeze mid-laugh. It didn't sound like any animal I'd ever heard before, more like the anguished cry of something not quite alive. I exchanged uneasy glances with the others, and even Taylor's skepticism wavered for a moment. Mm. Then came the footsteps, soft but distinct, as if someone, or something, was pacing around the graves. We strained our ears, mm -hmm. the laughter replaced by an uneasy silence. Kyle, ever the daredevil, grabbed a flashlight and announced, I'll check it out. He disappeared into the shadows, the beam of his flashlight flickering as he moved deeper into the graveyard. 
The footsteps continued growing louder and closer. My heart pounded in my chest, and I shot nervous glances at the others. Was this some elaborate prank? Or had we stumbled upon something we weren't meant to witness? Suddenly the wind picked up, carrying with it a chorus of whispers that seemed to swirl around us. The voices were indistinct, a jumble of words that sent a chill down my spine. I could see the same unease mirrored in the eyes of my friends. We called out for Kyle, but there was no response. The footsteps ceased, and an oppressive silence settled over the graveyard. Panic clawed at my throat as I clutched the flashlight, the beam trembling in my hands. And then, Kyle's voice echoed through the night, distant, distorted, and laced with fear. Get out! Leave now! Without a second thought, we bolted, stumbling over tombstones and tripping on uneven ground. The whispers grew louder, a cacophony of anguished voices that seemed to chase us out of the graveyard. <laughs> As we reached the entrance, the wind howled, and the graveyard gates slammed shut behind us with a resounding clang. I guess they didn't like them sitting there and laughing and joking all sorts. Maybe they're just like, you know, getting up to, like getting out of your bed to go and chase neighbors away or kids away from being too noisy at the front door or, the, or around the house. Same scenario here then. Ghosts are getting up to go and directly tell them to clear off and give us some peace to rest. Gasping for breath, we gathered outside our faces pale and eyes wide with terror. Kyle was nowhere to be seen. We waited, hoping he'd stumble out of the darkness, but the minutes stretched into an agonizing eternity. The first light of dawn began to streak across the sky, and we made a shaky pack to go back in and find Kyle. But as we approached the graveyard, the gates swung open, creaking on rusted hinges. The once still air now felt charged with an unsettling energy. As we ventured inside, we found Kyle standing near the gnarled oak tree, his eyes vacant, staring into the distance. He was muttering something under his breath, words that sent shivers down our spines. The whispers had returned, swirling around him like a malevolent breeze. Leave before it's too late, Kyle rasped, his voice devoid of the usual bravado. We grabbed him, shaking him out of his trance, but it was like he wasn't really there. He mumbled about shadows and voices, about something that had whispered terrible secrets into his mind. God. We half dragged, half carried him out of the graveyard, the morning sun casting long shadows that seemed to recoil from the cold truth we had stumbled upon. To this day, we don't talk about that night. Kyle never fully recovered, haunted by something he couldn't put into words. The graveyard became a forbidden place, a reminder that some dares are better left alone. And as for the whispers, to this day, they linger in the back of our minds, a ghostly echo of a night we'll never forget. Huh? That's, uh, that's interesting, isn't it? Um, not sure what to say about that one, to be honest. That was, that was a good one as well. There was three very good ones, actually. Um, but... Yeah, I mean, it's probably something you wouldn't want to mention, especially if you thought that one of the party, in this case Kyle, um, had some kind of event. Um, people that something was whispering to him, or that it shook his confidence that much that he believed there was someone with him, or near him, telling them to get out. I you wouldn't have thought that would have been the case with... Um, the graveyard as such, you know, it was, there you are, but um, that was really good. Let me know what you think yourselves in the comments down below. Let's say head across and give Twisted Tail some love. Let them know you're there and uh, thanks for watching guys and I'll see you all in the next one. Take care. Bye.